Morning internet viewers, it's Dee Gibble here, uh, fresh from my slumber, just rolled out of the bed, and before I even have my bowl of muesli and my fresh orange juice, I want to communicate with the World Wide Web and tell you about something that's very much playing on my mind. Uh, last night I had my usual movie evening with the folks, and uh, to start that movie marathon we watched Inception. Usually we watch a film after that, but we were so depressed and let down by the movie, we actually stopped it there and went to bed, and I'll tell you why. Inception had a lot of hype to it, there was a lot of uh, paraphernalia behind it. Chris Nolan, big Hollywood director, very exciting. Sat down, watched it, the excitement pretty much left me a few seconds in. It's supposed to be a very clever, complex narrative, it ain't that. I mean, the first thing I said when I turned the TV off was, this ain't Batman. Batman was great, I love the suit, I love the gadgets, I love the car. I love the big explosions, I love Gotham City. It was just an absolute roller coaster from start to end. Inception isn't really a roller coaster, it's more like just driving through a dual carriageway. It's very simple, it's very obvious, you just gotta keep your, your foot on the accelerator and just stay around 70. And it's pretty obvious what's happening. Uh, DiCaprio is just making Zeds the whole two hours. It's just a dream, it's just as simple as that. He's just having a slumber the entire movie. I could see that from the beginning, I could see it at the end, when he says hello to his children. It's just a blooming dream. What's that all about? He has a bit of a fling with old, the old Juno actress, whatever her name is, and it's just a massive letdown. Uh, last night, I put the actual uh, DVD into my love film envelope, and I actually put a note in the actual envelope. I just basically said, if Nolan is the future of cinema, D. Gimmel might as well R.I.P. You know, thanks anyway. Um, thanks for the special offers. You're doing a good job. But if you do come across Chris Nolan during some kind of film festival or some kind of business meeting, please pass on that I was really quite unhappy with the film. Just laying in bed just then, and this is what's kind of inspired this vlog, I'm fresh up, ready thinking, and I thought to myself, you know, if I got the opportunity to write a script about the dream world that we all exist in, what sort of film would I make? And I think the first thing that came to mind is that it would be better than Inception. If I uh, use one of the D. Gimmel dreams that have uh, rolled through this head at some point, I think I could create not just a great film, but a hell of a trilogy, a real box set, you know. I mean, one dream that's very much reoccurring, I'm not entirely sure why it reoccurs, is it's uh, D. Gimmel, he's wandering through Brighton High Street, you know, saying hello to the people of Brighton. Some of the people I don't even know, I just make eye contact and say, how are you? Almost touching them, a bit like E.T. with my finger of positivity and lighting them all up like lighthouses. But in this dream, I'm wandering down the high street and suddenly I see a hovering feather in front of me and I think, goodness me, what, what's happened there? And another feather appears and another feather appears and I start to realise the actual feathers are coming from me coming out of my sleeves, out of my collar, what's happened? Perhaps, you know, at some point uh, a seagull had a stroke mid-air and fell into the hood of my, uh, my anorak and slid into my actual coat and now I'm crushing it with my backpack and bits of feathers are being forced out. That's the only logical conclusion I can think of. I'm panicked, I go down an alleyway. I am creating these feathers genetically. I've turned into some kind of genetic freak. Some kind of bizarre fowl. At that point, I don't know what sort of bird I'm going to turn into. Am I a blue tit? Am I a wren? Then, I'm covered in feathers. And I'm thinking, dear God, there's no way I can go back into the high street. And I just start mutating into a bird. Um, the actual feathers isn't too painful. They're just popping out left, right, and center. But what is painful is that my mouth and my nose mutate and morph into an enormous marmalade yellow colored beak. And it really is rather large. And I look at myself in the puddle that's in front of me, and I am basically entirely a hawk, except I have my normal eyes and my ears. And I run down the alleyway, a bit Spider-Man actually, a bit Sam Raimi, I've got to say I got a bit of a thrill from this bit. I run down, open the wings out like a Spitfire, and I cruise into the air. And it really is like a PlayStation game. It's all a bit CGI and very exciting. I'm going over the city and I'm just enjoying it. That The wind is rustling through the feathers. Um, I overtake a couple of seagulls, showing off at that point. I'm enjoying the whole hawk experience. And I'm thinking, for crying out loud, Gimmel, you've got a bunch of juveniles at the Gimmel Centre right now. They're probably setting lights to Porter Cabin. What are you doing hanging around like a bird? And I think, no. This is my moment, I'm gonna embrace it and enjoy it. Just at one point, I was just on the ledge of a building, and I remember myself just stood there, wings out, just looking down at them, unimpressed. I am Hawkman. Look at me, flapping my wings, and moving my head. And I I turned into a completely different creature. I can feel the hawk in me now, just swiveling around, the feathers, 
glowing off the sunlight and the big beak just sparkling with the sun-kissed lighting. I mean, I felt very empowered. Wah! Pushing seagulls and crows aside. I was in charge. Who's holding the gun now, world? Gibble, the hawk. And then I flew to a forest, a nearby forest, and I could immediately feel the greenery around me. I had to be one with nature. And I landed on a branch, like so, looking around. You know, if there was an owl nearby, or a wood pigeon, immediately I was going to push them aside. I suppose, in a way, looking at it, which is quite frightening, I have become the bully of the forest. And that's when I wake up, and I'm in the Gimmel bedroom. It's like, thank God I'm not a hawk. Bloody hell, like anything you think it's fun, but when you really go into the day-to-day -day life of a hawk, there's a lot of responsibilities. I think if I have the dream again, I'll have to give myself a good talking to and you know, find a local lake and look in the, uh, the reflection of the lake with my big, long, majestic, yellow, marmalade-coloured beak and the, and the feathers and the eyes. And I'd say, hey, you've got a lot of powers there, sir, Mr. Hawkman, but use them responsibly. This is just a poem that I've, I've come up with about... Uh, about my time as a Hawkman, it just basically uh, bubbled a lot of creativity juice in me. I am Hawkman. I am the forest. I am the feathered storm. Do not turn on me, hedgehogs. Do not turn on me, foxes. And if it's in a proper poetry atmosphere, I'll have a drum. Boom, boom, boom. You can hear my cry. Wah! You can hear me scoot through the sky. Whoosh! Feathers in the air. Fear in the sky. I am Hawkman, all seeing, all flying, all being. I am the man who has become a hawk. So, another vlog with D. Gimmel. By the way, that dream has got my copyright on it. You can't take those ideas and turn them into a screenplay because that's something I'm going to be doing because they're my dreams, they come from my mind and they're my intellectual property. And um, I have a dream diary which I date. So, you know, if you did actually take those ideas and turn, in, turn into a Hawkman trilogy saga, um, I have a dream diary. It's all dated and I take it to court. Simple as that. I wouldn't want to do that, but I would do it if it came to it. Take care, Gimel fans, Gimel followers. I, call, I keep calling you Gimel fans. It's a bit big-headed of me, but I suppose if you're watching this, you are a fan and appreciator of what I'm doing. Take care.